morning, everyone. For the past month, the class of 2018 has been working on the freshman speech competition. And I want to thank all our small group leaders, our semifinal judges from Friday, and especially Mrs. Klausner and Mr. Quinn, who have helped me so much throughout the past several years with this process. Today, you'll be hearing speeches from these three gentlemen, uh, and they'll speak in this order. Ben Friedgen, whose faculty sponsor was Dr. Armstrong, Tim Buchanan, whose faculty sponsor was Dr. Morrow, and Josh Okatate, whose faculty sponsor was Mrs. Moon. And our judges today are Mr. O'Neill, Mr. Norton, Mrs. Holmgren, Ms. Raines, and Mr. Hamrick. At the end of assembly, I will be back to announce this year's winner. So please give all the finalists your attention and respect as they deliver their speeches. And now, Ben will begin our competition for us. On May 3rd, 1943, an allied B-24 Liberator bomber crashed in the early hours over the Atlantic Ocean, killing 14 on board. This tragic event occurred at the midway point of the largest war in the history of the world. One of the deceased was a lieutenant general in the U.S. Army. And to this day, he is the highest ranking American military official to fall in the line of duty. His name, Frank Andrews, MBA class of 1901. Gentlemen, I stand before you today to reflect upon a certain virtue. A virtue that is sought by many, yet attained by few. Though difficult to achieve, this virtue directs the very progression and prosperity of mankind. And that is the most important virtue on earth, courage. Courage, like all of mankind's virtues, has a beginning. Men of honor develop their courage in their youth, and for many of you, your courage begins here, on these hallowed grounds of MBA. The very essence of what we do here striving every day for success, requires courage fully and frequently. The moment each one of you decided to take on the challenge of an MBA life, you also pledged to display and develop the utmost courage in everyday life. Put simply, an MBA man is courageous. He puts the needs of others before his own. He does the right thing, even when it's not the easy thing. And when faced with adversity, he does not shy away, but instead stands boldly and faces it. These qualities were well displayed by General Andrews because his situation required him to do so. And at some point in each of our lives, we will come across a situation for which tremendous courage is required of us. And when that time comes, we will have our experiences at MBA to draw from. The moments here on the hill where we had to put the needs of others before our own, where we had to boldly face adversity, and where we had to do the right thing, even in the presence of fear or uncertainty, will serve as a guide for when we have to face these situations later in life. It is our duty as men of MBA to display and develop the very courage that great men like Lieutenant General Andrews and other graduates of MBA have displayed in their lives. Therefore, gentlemen, I challenge each one of you to analyze your own integrity. Are you fulfilling the requirements of an MBA student and a great man by leading your life with courage? I understand that being courageous may be difficult, and should any of you falter in your integrity or begin to question your values, I direct you once more to the Lieutenant General Andrews, who displayed the greatest type of courage of all the willingness to die for one's country. And I pray today that my MBA brothers and I may become empowered by such great courage at some point in our lives, and that we too may achieve the most esteemed of human virtues. Thank you.
Now, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you an exact definition of courage, but I can tell you that courage is synonymous to the needed societal changes in each and every community around the world. And many of us see courage as a hierarchy that we can achieve, but courage is really inside each and every person in this room. William Sifford, a young African-American boy, worked at a country club at the age of 10. And he fell in love with this game of golf, but he realized that the people who played this game that he loved looked nothing like him. They were all white males, and he was this young black boy, and he was wondering, why don't they look like me? So after serving in World War II, he came back and he had this dream of being a professional golfer, but his dream was shot down because of the color of his skin, but he didn't understand this still. So he kept pushing on and on because he knew he wasn't playing for himself. He was playing for those men, women, and children that followed him that wanted the exact same dream. Isn't that courage? Cesar Chavez, a immigrant worker from California, he had a stuff. Uh, he had a tough. Uh, he had a troubling life as a child, and he barely had any food or water to eat, uh, barely a roof over his head. But he knew once he got older that he didn't want this for his people anymore. He wanted them to live better. So he devo he developed the National Farmers Association, who went on hunger strikes, wrote these petitions, and went on all these strikes against these big farm corporations who went against them who took all of their money. He ultimately died because of his cause and he didn't really care after, and his family didn't care because he died a courageous death because he died for those men, women, and children who he was doing better for. Isn't that courage? Many of you know the name Rosa Parks. Yeah, yeah, the lady who didn't stand up on the bus. Many people don't realize that Rosa Parks stood up for her cause by not standing up. And many people missed that this small action that she did actually led to the bus boycotts, which actually led to equal rights for African Americans and Caucasians all over the world. Now that small action that she did seems like a pretty big courageous action, doesn't it? Malay Yusufitz, a young Pakistani girl, 17. You're probably wondering, what could she do? You know, she's 17, she's a girl. She can't do anything, right? This girl won the Nobel Peace Prize, the youngest to ever win this prize. She taught young girls in her country who weren't allowed to have an education that they can be somebody in this world. Even though she wasn't somebody in this world, they could be even better than her. Even though she barely had an education, they could be somebody. And after being shot in the left side of her face by the Taliban, ultimately left in critical condition, this woman came back and taught these children day after day because she knew that her life didn't matter. It was these children's lives that matter. That's courage. But courage isn't outside our community. Courage is actually here at NBA. As many of you know, Miss Kidd had a foot injury last year and it troubled me that she came here each and every day even though it was hard for her to get around. And I realized that she came here each day because she knew if she put those Skittles and M&Ms out for us, then we would walk around with a smile. And isn't that courage? When Mr. Bryant was here, he always walked around, shook our hands, patted us on the back, tell us to pick our heads up, because he knew if he did that, he would make us have a better day. Isn't that courage? But again, courage is outside all of us. Courage is in here. Each person in this room has courage, from the microbes to the seniors. We all have courage. We all go through bad, bad tests, bad teachers, troubling times during sports. <laughs> but we all come back each and every day and say, I'm going to do better. This isn't it. This isn't me. I'm going to do better next time. That's courage. Thank you. Courage under fire. Now, I'm not going to stand up here and preach to you. That's what we got Coach Sanders for. 
but I do want to relay some important information to you I think can help you out. I want to hit home and possibly get the crowd hype in the process. But let me ask you guys a question. How many times have you crumbled? And by that I mean buckled under pressure. How many times have you let outside influences or past experiences stop you from even trying to attain a goal, complete a task? How many of y'all have done that? Raise your hand. Me too. Too many times. And that's why I'm not a straight A student. That's why this past year I wasn't a starter on the basketball team. And that's why if I'm not in the class with you, you probably don't even know me. I let past test scores dictate how I attacked my biology homework. I let a little adversity on the basketball court turn me into a shaky passive turnover machine. Why? Because I was scared. Scared of what would happen if I failed another test. Scared of what would happen if my man scored on me again. What could happen, what could happen, what could happen. But a couple of weeks ago, I came to this beautiful, life-changing, two-word realization. You ready to hear it? Screw it. <laughs> what did he just say? <laughs> yeah, screw it. In the play we all love so very much, Macbeth, Our warrior hero, Macbeth, he's a killer, trained fighter. What he does, he kills kings. That's him. But you realize, as we get into the story, he even starts to doubt his own abilities. He even goes so far as to ask Lady Macbeth, what if I can't do it? What if we fail? What if we can't kill the king? She looks at this man and says, well, if you screw your courage to the sticking place, we'll not fail. Now, what does that mean? Screw your courage to the sticking place. Let me give you an example. Back to Rosa Parks. She knew if she sat down in the front of that bus, she'd be asked to move. And furthermore, she knew if she said no, there would be dire consequences. But she was like, man, screw it. If I, I work hard like you work hard, I shouldn't have to get up for you. And, uh, I guess she screwed her courage to the sticking place, and if you look at this crowd, I'm guessing she ain't fail either. Kobe Bryant, as a rookie, airballed four straight times to lose a playoff series. That could make someone not ever want to shoot again. But who's been taking the last shot for the Lakers for the past 20 years? You guessed it. He says, screw it. This is what I wake up for. This is what I grind for. I eat and sleep for. He screwed his courage to a sticking place, and he says, if I miss, I miss. So what? And the most beautiful example of all, when your big red freshman basketball team was down 16 to Father Ryan in the playoffs. We could have just said, Ah, uh, well, guys, we made it this far, semifinals. Most people don't make it here. Great season. But nah, they said, screw it. <laughs> we gonna go down, we going down shooting. Well, nah, that was mostly Will Nutter. <laughs> they screwed their curse to the sticking place. And we the champs now, so I guess we ain't fail either. So next time the fear of failure tries to creep up on you and paralyze you and stop you from even trying to take a chance on completing a task or reaching a goal, you should be like, man, screw it. If I mess up, I mess up. If you fail a test, so what? Screw it. Study harder next time. If you miss a shot, even if you airball, shoot the next one. You have to believe that it's going in. So let me leave you with a few words. If we, as a student body, as a whole, screw our courage to the sticking place, we will not fail. 
We'll succeed because you were courageous. Because you were courageous. Because you were courageous. Because I was courageous. Thank you. By an extremely close judgment, we are pleased that the winner of our 2015 freshman speech competition is Josh Okatete.